Good afternoon, everybody. As we begin the process of reviewing the details of the governor's proposed fiscal 2014 year budget, there are some important facts that we must keep in mind. The budget plan is balanced. At least on paper, it has to be balanced. There's no accomplishment or novelty to that. It has to be balanced. Just like all previous budgets, it's required to be balanced by our state constitution. The potential problems always are the assumptions that are used to put in balance a budget on paper. <clears throat> the problem can start with the administration's revenue projections for the rest of the current fiscal year 2013 which there is some uncertainty. The real difference lies between the administration's revenue forecast and the forecast that we just heard from, from the nonpartisan Office of Legislative Services. The difference is 302 million in the current fiscal year, and when projected across fiscal year 2014, an additional 375 million for a total of 637 million dollars. Now one could say that is one percent of the budget and that is correct but 637 million dollars means a whole heck of a lot of priorities to the people of New Jersey. <clears throat> OLS, the Office of Legislative Services, is not the only outside agency that feels uneasy about the current revenue projections. Just last September, the rating agency Standard & Poor's placed the state on a negative outlook. An assessment that continued even after the governor introduced his proposed fiscal year 2014 budget. The Standard & Poor's latest report calls both the fiscal 2013 budget and the fiscal 2014 budget structurally unbalanced. And for those who have been here, and I've said this earlier today, in the legislature, on both sides of the aisle, who may be here for a long time, it is imperative that we bring the state of New Jersey's budget structurally, to make it a structurally balanced budget. S&P report, st report stated several concerns, including the following. A fiscal 2014 revenue forecast that is built on fiscal 2013 revenue targets that based on our analysis could be challenging to meet even after recent downward revenue revisions. In many ways, we are experiencing now what is very similar to last year at this time when we heard similar news from the Office of Legislative Services regarding revenue weakness and other potential risks and then the proposed FY 2013 budget. At that time, OLS warned about a potential revenue shortfall of $537 million, just $100 million shy of the $637 million shortfall that is projected here today. The administration's response was to stick with the overly optimistic revenue growth rates for fiscal 2013 that S&P had warned us about. An OLS estimated we were $473 million too high at the time. Let us fast forward for a moment <clears throat> to the administration's latest take on the current year revenues and it becomes clear what OLS and Standard Poor's were talking about. To get through of the rest of this fiscal year, 2013, the governor had to lower estimates for all of his revenues other than the gross income tax by over $800 million. $800 million they've had to lower their revenue estimates while the current fiscal year 2013 budget <clears throat> has been helped out by an income tax revenue spike that no one could have pr predicted, not this administration, not OLS, not this legislature, not anyone, we now know that this income tax spike has grown out of surprisingly strong stock market performance in 2012 and to taxpayer reactions to the anticipated federal tax law changes. And we hope that the income tax continues to grow. The strong income tax revenues continue to grow for the betterment of New Jersey. But concerns still remain that the administration's assumed rate of income tax revenue growth is too high. 
And OLS, after having increased its own estimate for current year income tax growth, now warns of a potential 100 million shortfall, which combined with other shortfalls will add up to over 300 million overall. I think the challenge for this administration and this legislature <coughs> is that we are, we must recognize that we are potentially out of balance. And that the strange claim last week by the administration that revenues in March ex exceed expectations only adds to the confusion because the truth behind the claim is the March revenues had grown just 1.8%. We, we will be exploring today why 1.8% growth when double digit accelerated revenue growth is needed for the rest of the fiscal year is considered, is considered exceeding expectations. Of course, we must wait until the end of May when our treasurer and Dr. David Rosen will again appear before us to <coughs> relieve us and confirm to us what the final revenue projections will be for both fiscal 2013 and fiscal year 2014. This uncertainty is made it worse by the fact that the administration was able to find 400 million so-called savings by delaying another three months the property tax rebates to homeowners increasing the time homeowners must wait for the direct property tax relief by a record of 20 months, which we have confirmed this morning. We must also take into consideration a few revenue sources that have yet to come to fruition, including the $166 million in affordable housing monies. After nine months of assuming it, the courts still have not yet rendered a decision on whether or not the state is entitled to these monies. A $120 million one-time payment courtesy of the administration's intention to privatize the state lottery. The, although the treasurer has refused to appear before assembly committees, did indicate last week that that plan is moving forward and he should expect $120 million by the end of this current fiscal year. There's the assumed receipt of $100 million in legal settlements, including approximately $50 million from the Passaic River settlement. And the administration's contention that a new online gaming program in New Jersey could yield 180 million in new revenues, which is based upon $1.2 billion market in the first year. An assumption that every major gaming analyst and Wall Street has considered not possible. It is my hope today, as Senator Pucco has stated, that this hearing will be productive and the treasurer and his staff, not only today, but the next two months, will be responsive to this committee's questions and our role in preparing a budget for the state of New Jersey as a separate co-equal branch of government. It is my hope that any of the uncertainties that we do have can be addressed today and, and hopefully some answers will be provided. I look forward to working with this legislature, with this committee, with the treasurer, with the governor's front office, to having a, a budget that could be sponsored by members of both sides of the aisle, and that will be done before June 30th, uh, so the residents of New Jersey know what to expect with regards to priorities from this budget. I thank you, and I look forward to hearing from the treasurer.